open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter in your Schofield Bible, page 1215. And we'll be reading a few verses here, starting with verse 14. We'll read through verse 17. The text verse is the 16th verse. We'll go on to a couple of other passages and read from them also. But let's stand, please, for the reading of the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 15 through 17. And we'll read these responsively. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ... Yet have ye not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Turn now to Philippians chapter 2. Page 1258, 1258. We'll read the fifth verse only, Philippians 2 5. Let's read together, please. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy chapter 2, page 1275. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And verse 12. Let's read together, please. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And let's pray. Father, thank you for this, thy word. Help us to hunger and thirst for that which is thy word indeed. Thank you for faithful men of old who wrote down what you wanted them to write. Thank you for faithful men through the ages who have stood the test and who have stood for thy word and its preservation, sometimes at the uh, very threat of death itself and sometimes dying, that this word might be preserved. Thank you for a preacher who preaches to us, who is loyal to the truth and faithful to his people. Bless us today. We need thee. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to speak this morning on a very simple subject. I'm going to use an old illustration that is a, something that happened to me that you folks who have been here through the years will recognize, and I'm going to sandwich in between it a uh, truth that is rather new and fresh to you, I think. I want to speak on the subject, How to Be Like Jesus. Mrs. Colston played a while ago such songs as to be like Jesus and oh to be like the precious Redeemer and songs about Christ likeness I believe this morning I can help you to to grow to be more like the master as the writer says Um, the message is to be how to be like Jesus our Heavenly Father I hesitate even to preach this message because I'm so far from my goal I can say with the Apostle Paul with more emphasis than he I count not myself to have apprehended but I I try and I pray you to help me as I speak to help myself to be more like the master and to help those who call me preacher and those who visit with us today likewise the more like the master Amen. An event that took place many years ago in my life that I have recounted to you on occasion through these years. When our son Dave was a little boy, just a little tyke, he used to drive with me to church in the morning. And uh, I I come early. And uh, then always he would wait to come with me later 
Mrs. Hiles always drives on home and, and gets the meal prepared and and uh, while I stay at the church and, and counsel with people and so forth, and I usually usually get there sometime after she does. Well, Dave would always stay. I'm talking about when he was two or three years of age. Uh, he was all and all the way through until he got married. He uh, he he stayed. Sometimes sometimes I'd stay here at eleven thirty at night at his emergency, and I'd come in and Dave be sound asleep, waiting for Dad to go home with his dad. The first time that Dave ever sat in a Sunday school class, I, he'd been in the nursery, of course, but I mean the first time he got old enough to sit in a class with a teacher. We were driving home that morning, and just Dave and I were driving, and well, I was driving. And uh, um, he, uh, I said, son, uh, how was Sunday school this morning? And little tyke, he said, daddy, he said, good. I said, what was the lesson about? What did you learn? And David said, I learned about God. And David has those same eyes, big brown, mean looking eyes that I have. Uh, Betty Kirk, my secretary, used to be, used to call me a cocker spaniel. She says, You got eyes like a cocker spaniel. I'm built more like a boxer, but I, uh, uh, she, uh, I said, I said, Dave, what did you learn? And Dave looked at me with those big brown eyes and said, I learned about God. Well, I thought that was a good thing to learn about in Sunday school. And I said, What did you learn about God? He looked at me and he said, I learned that God loves me more than anybody loves me. I said, what else did you learn? I learned that uh, when I do bad, God spanks me and does he spank hard. I said, what else did you learn about God? He said, I learned that after God spanks me, then he hugs me and tells me he loves me. And it was from my own, hey, Dad, are you God? And I said, no, son, I'm not God. But I'm glad you get me mixed up with him. And I hope after you've been in our home for 18, 20 years until you leave, I hope you still get me mixed up with God. We're told in the Bible that we're to be like Jesus. Now, don't leave me now. I'm going to help you this morning. We're told in the Bible that we're to be like Jesus. I'm told in 1 John 4, 17 to be like him. I'm told in John chapter 15 and verse 12, I am to love like Jesus. I'm told in John 14 and verse 12, I am to work like Jesus. I'm told in Ephesians 4.32, I am to forgive like Jesus. I'm told in Philippians 2.5 5, that I am to think like Jesus. But now, wait a minute. Here's where I despair. How in the world can I be like Jesus? I mean, here I am, a little old piece of dirt down here on the earth. How, and especially a new Christian. All of a sudden you get saved and, and, and the preacher stands up and says, you ought to be like Jesus. Oh, well, my soul in heaven, how in the world can I ever do so? I look at him and despair, but he gives me the formula in the Bible. And I'm going to give it to you this morning that will help you as much as any sermon you ever heard on Christlikeness in your life. He gives me a formula how I can be like him. Now, follow me carefully. It is very interesting to note to whom Paul wrote to be like Jesus. He said to that great group of Christians at Philippi, that generous, loving group of Christians at Philippi, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. But he never said anything like that to the church of Corinth. That worldly baby church, or church of babies at Corinth. Um, he said... To the church at Ephesus, I want you to forgive like Jesus forgave. But never said anything to the Corinthian people. They were babies. Never told them any time that they were supposed to be like Christ. He told the Philippians. He told the Ephesians. He even told his disciples in John 14, 12 and John 15, 12. I want you to work like me and I want you to love like me. Don't leave me now. And he said, but he said this to the disciples. But never one time, as far as I can tell, does he ever admonish the baby Christians at Corinth to be like Jesus? Now, follow me carefully. He suggested to them that they be followers of him. He did not say to the Corinthian people, you be like Jesus. He said, be followers of me. In our text a while ago, for the coast and red. Then Paul said to Timothy, get this now. Paul said to Timothy, 
be thou an example of the believers. I hear people oftentimes say, well, you shouldn't follow men. Let me ask you a question. Are you an idiot in any other area? Or is that the only area where you're a moron? Paul said, be ye followers of me. Now look, Dr. Dumb Bunny, why don't you wake up? So Paul said to Timothy, be thou an example. Then he said to some, follow me. And then he said, I want to be like Christ. He said that I may be conformed to his image. He said that I may fellowship with him, may know him in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering. The apostle Paul said, I want to be like Christ. He said to Timothy, uh, you be like me. He said to others, you be like Timothy. Now, let me explain what I mean. It's like a football game. The, the purpose of the game is to win. Would somebody tell the Cubs that? <laughs> the purpose of the game is to win. To win. And, and while you're at it, stop by Comiskey Park and tell the White Sox the same thing. Now, in football, the purpose of the game is to win. But that's not the immediate purpose. The immediate purpose is a first down. And then the second purpose is a touchdown. And then the third goal is to win the game. So our, our goal way out yonder is to win the game. But closer to that is to make a touchdown. But closer than that is to make a first down. For if you keep making first downs, you'll make a touchdown. You keep making touchdowns, you'll win the game. Now that's what the, what, what the Lord is telling us here. He's saying, I, I, we ought to be like Jesus. But the truth is, while you're a baby Christian, that's not your, your, your first down. To be like Jesus is compared to winning the game. But in between being like Jesus, there are a lot of people between you and Jesus. So the thing for you to do, he's, he's saying this. He's, trying, he's saying, try to be like someone who is trying to be like someone. Who is trying to be like someone? Who is trying to be like someone? Who is trying to be like Jesus? If I were a child in this church, I'd pick out some good Christian teenager. And I'd try to be like that teenager. If I were a teenager in this church, I'd pick out some adult, young adult, and I'd try to be like that young adult. If I were a young lady in this church, I would pick out some mature Christian lady. And I'd try to be like that Christian lady. If I were a young, young, a young married man in this church, I would try to pick out some mature Christian man. I'd try to be like him. Uh, young preacher boy, don't copy Lee Robertson first. Try Jack Scott. No, let me think of somebody better than that. I can't see anybody better than that. But, no, I mean... Uh, uh, what, what God is saying is this, and, and I get sick and tired. Uh, in the Baptist Bible Tribune newspaper, young folks, listen to me over here. Hey, hey, young folks, young lady on the aisle, listen to me while I'm preaching. I got something to teach you. I expect you to pay attention to me. Now, after you've seen Christ's likeness in me, I'll continue preaching this sermon. The simple truth is, God is saying to you, He wants you to be like Christ. That's your goal someday. That's what the psalmist said. I shall be satisfied when I awake in His likeness. But you're not going to awake in His likeness tomorrow morning, so why don't you awake in somebody's likeness that's trying to be like Him? Why don't you pick out a first down before you think about winning the game? And then pick out a touchdown, if you please. Now, let me be I don't know what somebody's saying. Oh, Brother Howell. Oh, I back that Baptist Bible Tribune. <laughs> when you get old, you, you forget sometimes. But the Baptist, uh, some nut wrote, uh, some reverend nut wrote an article in there. And he said, uh, you, we shouldn't have heroes. He said, because sometimes heroes fall. And he said, we shouldn't have heroes. Now, that guy ought to leave his brain for the Smithsonian Institute so he can study his ignorance to avoid it in the next, uh, in the next generation. America used to have heroes. Don't have them anymore. We call them role models. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You listen carefully to me. 
You could do a lot better than make this fella your role model. You could do a lot better than make this fella or this fella or this fella or this fella your role model. You young layman, you do a lot better. You could do a lot worse than make this fella your role model. You look at Ray Bordway and say, I'd like to be like that someday. Now, when you get like Ray Bordway, you can say, I'd like to be like somebody else. And one of these days, you can say with the Apostle Paul, ought to be like thee. But you're a long ways from there. And the way you become like Jesus is to become like someone who is becoming like someone who is becoming like someone who is becoming like someone who is like Jesus. When I was a boy in grade school, I'll never forget. My parents voted for George Washington. But when I was a boy in grade school, I wanted to be like the sixth graders. Boy, I looked at those big old sixth graders, and I said, Wow, I sure be glad not to be like that. And then I got in the sixth grade. I looked over to that junior high school bunch. Man, did they ever look rough. And I said, Boy, and you, you remember how, how big they used to seem to you? Huh? And I'd look over there, and I'd say, Boy, I'd like to be like those junior hires. And I got in the junior high, and I said, boy, I'd like to be like those high schoolers. And then I got like the high schoolers, and I said, boy, I'd like to be like those college people. And then I got in college, and I said, boy, I'd like to be like those older people. Now I'm an older person. I say, boy, I'd like to be in grade school. <laughs> but that's the way you grow up. You know, look, look no six-year-old boy looks at a 70-year-old man and says, boy, I'd like to be like that. No boy looks at me and says, I'd like to have that hairstyle. <laughs> Nobody does that. A little boy looks. But I can recall when I was in, in, in junior high school, there was a football player named Torbert Croft. Isn't that amazing how I can remember? We're talking about, we're talking folks about 60 years ago. Torbert Croft. Now, I don't know who, I can't remember what happened yesterday. But, but I remember I looked at Torbert Croft. Man, a live water guy. And Nick Lanza, he played fullback. What a guy, what a guy. I looked to him. And then I got in high school, I looked to somebody else. And I looked to somebody else. And looked to somebody else. Now, you say, oh, Brother Hiles, don't put any confidence in the flesh. I'm not telling you to put confidence in the flesh. I'm saying you better find better flesh than yours and copy it. That's what I'm saying. But you say, Brother Hiles, they'll disappoint you. Now, listen carefully to this. They may disappoint you, but they'll also encourage you. Because when you see them make a mistake, then that means that they make mistakes too. And I make mistakes. Look, I, I used to enjoy John Rice doing something wrong. Well, you've heard this story, you're sick of it, but I'm going to tell it to you and make you sicker. The first time I was in, in Tampa, Florida, they forgot to get a mo two motel rooms, and John Rice and I shared a motel room. Had two double beds. And I dreaded it. Oh, did I ever dread it. And so we, time came to go to bed. And I didn't want to do it because I knew he'd pray all night long. And I didn't want to pray all night long. I didn't want to pray two hours. I didn't want to pray an hour. I want to say now, lay down to sleep, pray to my soul to keep, amen, and let's go to sleep. Now, now I'll praise the Lord, my soul to keep, and now it's time to go to sleep. Well, get that poetry. Doctor, I say, Dr. Rice, get that Bible. He'll read half the Bible and pray the rest of the night? Dr. Rice got a novel by Zane Gray. That's what he read for when sleep. Tickled a fire out of me. Tickled a fire. Why? Because I, I don't get, I don't lose a, a confidence in the flesh when somebody that I admire reveals the fact that they are flesh. But there's a long ways, there, there's a long ways between you and being like Christ. And what you better do is you better find a good pattern who's trying to be like Christ, who's lived for God a while longer. And by the way, that puts an added responsibility on everybody here. If you sixth grade boys are the object of the admiration of those boys who are younger in grade school, you sixth grade boys ought to live right. And if you junior high young people are the adoration of those kids in grade school, you're their pattern, you better behave yourself. And you high schoolers are a pattern of those who are junior high schoolers, you better behave yourself. 
young married people or college people or patterns for these young folks in high school, you better behave yourself. And if you are older people or patterns for these younger people, you better behave yourself. The Apostle Paul said to older ladies, teach the younger ladies to be like you. Let them teach them to love their husbands and raise their, children, raise their children and so forth. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. God is not opposed to us having heroes and, and folks that we love after whom we want to model our lives. Would somebody tell me what would be wrong for, for some preacher to want to be like Lee Robertson? Well, I want to be like Jesus. You are so far from that, you better set your goal for a first down. See, what you're trying to do. You're trying to win a ball game always with the bomb. You want to throw a 50-yard touchdown pass on every play, but that doesn't happen but once or twice in a game and sometimes never. And it's not going to happen to you. Now, I'm trying to say, I, as your preacher, want to live so that this man right here would like to be like me. And I want him to live so these young men down here will want to be like him. And I want them to live so that these high school young people will want to be like them. I'm saying the Apostle Paul said, I want to be like Christ. He said to the Timothy, he said, you be you be like me. He said, Timothy, then you be an example of the believers. So the believers tried to be like Timothy, and Timothy tried to be like Paul, and Paul tried to be like Christ, and the game was won. By the way, all the time when I was growing up, my goal was to be not be an adult. That was my eventual goal. I never did say, I want to be like those sixth graders and then I want to die. My goal was to be an adult. But you don't go from being in the fifth grade to being an adult. And you don't grow from being a new baby Christian to being like Jesus. So I want to say this, ladies and gentlemen, you set people up as your models, as your heroes, as your patterns. Oh, you say they'll stumble and break my heart. Well, bless God, there's somebody between you and Jesus. And so when they make a mistake, don't, don't, don't crucify them, don't throw them out. Realize that you've made more mistakes than they have. And set people as your heroes, your patterns, and your models. When I was a young man, I wanted to be a Christian like Craig Freeman. Craig Freeman was about three or four years older than I am. And I looked at Craig Freeman, and I said, that's the kind of Christian I want to be. When I got up the age where Craig Freeman had been, I looked at somebody else, Ed Teal. Remember Ed Teal? Ed Teal was my ideal. Boy, I'm just full of poetry this morning. And uh, I, I want to be like Ed Teal. Ed Teal played third base on our ball team. He sang in the choir. He was a great guy. And uh, as a young man, I want to be like Ed Teal. When I got a little older, I wanted to be like Proctor Boyd, one of the greatest men I ever met, my, my high school Sunday school teacher. I watched the way he walked. And by the way, that's a good idea. You preachers, you ought to watch the way those of us on this platform walk. And watch the way we sit. Good night. On no, second thought, don't watch the way you sit. But, but, but I'd watch Proctor Boyd. I liked the way he walked. I, and I'd try to walk like him. He, he walked. He didn't, he didn't lean back like this and walk like this. And he didn't walk like this. He bounced on the ball to his feet and walked like this. And I said, that's the way I want to walk. I watched him in the choir. I watched how he sat. And I said, that's the way I want to sit. I want to be like Craig Freeman. And then later I want to be like Ed Teal. And later I want to be like Proctor Boyd. And then I want to be like J.T. Sizemore. He was our choir director and assistant to our, uh, pastor at our church. J.T. Sizemore influenced me tremendously. My wife will tell you this. My, the way I promote, the way I, I, I in, try to enthuse people to, to, to grow, and the way I try to promote attendance through these years, J.T. Sizemore, I'd look at him and say, I want to be like him. And then when I got older and became a preacher and a pastor, I want to be like J.C. Sizemore, his father, who was my preacher. All the time, though, I'd look at Brother Sizemore in the pulpit and say, I'd like to be like him. I'd like to be like him, but I knew I could not be like him. So I set Craig Freeman, and then Ed Teal, and then Proctor Boyd, and then J.T. Sizemore. 
I wanted to be like Brother Sizemore, but I wasn't going to become like Brother Sizemore until I became like J.T. Sizemore. And I wasn't going to become like J.T. Sizemore until I became like Ed Teal or uh, Proctor Boyd. And I wasn't going to become like Proctor Boyd until I became like Ed Teal. And I wasn't going to become like Ed Teal until I became like Craig Freeman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say something. Don't you listen to these super spiritual, pious prudes that say to you, take your eyes off man. That's the dumbest thing. I Paul said, be followers of me. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm a very poor example. All of us are poor examples. But some of us are poorer examples than others. So follow an example that's, that's less poor than you are. So your goal is to be like Jesus. Let me, let me take another, another view of it. I wanted to live like Jesus. And so I studied John R. Rice. For he's the man who lived more like Jesus than any man I ever met. And I still say that. So I studied John R. Rice. I like what the little boy said to his mama. My mama said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I want a bicycle. And, uh, and uh, she said, well, ask God for it. He said, I won't ask somebody that's got skin on him. And I want to be like somebody that's got skin on him. So I, I decided I want to live like John Rice. Then I decided I want to pray like Jesus. But I never have seen Jesus pray. And there's a long distance between what I was and I am and the prayer life of Jesus. So I decided to study the prayer life of Dr. Ford Porter. The greatest man of prayer I ever met in my life. I, stu I wanted to, 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 uh, to live like Jesus, so I studied John Rice. I wanted to pray like Jesus, so I studied Ford Porter. I wanted to love like Jesus, so I studied my mother. My mother knew how to love. And I studied my mother. I wanted to be to love like my mother. I cannot love like Jesus, but I can love like somebody that is trying to love like Jesus. I wanted to lead like Jesus, so I studied Lee Robertson, who I think is the greatest leader. And you don't know him like uh, Lee Robertson I knew. Please do not walk out while I'm preaching, folks. The Lee Robertson that I knew was a pastor of, the, at one time, the largest church in America. What a leader. I wish you could have seen the young Lee Robertson standing up in his, behind, behind his pulpit. I wish you could see him leading those several thousand people at the Highland Park Baptist Church. I recall one day I was on the platform. I preached 167 times for him. I was about ready to preach. A student in the college was reading the sword of the Lord. And Dr. Robertson was introducing me. He stopped and said, Son, put down that paper. Did you hear me? Put down that paper. It scared the fire out of me. I didn't read a paper for six months after that. So when I say, listen to me, don't blame me. Blame Lee Robertson. I wanted to live like Jesus. I found a man I thought was trying to live like him and tried to live like John Rice. I wanted to pray like Jesus. I found a man I thought was praying more like him. So I studied Ford Porter. I, found the, I wanted to love like Jesus. So I found the person I thought loved more like him. I studied my mother. I wanted to lead like Jesus. So I found the person that leads uh, more, more like Jesus than anybody I knew. I studied Lee Robertson. I wanted to teach like Jesus, and so I found the person that taught like Jesus more than anybody I ever knew, and that's my pastor, J.C. Sizemore. And I wanted to praise like Jesus, and so I found the person that I thought had the praise life more like Jesus than anybody else, and I studied Charles Wagle. He's the fellow, the old evangelist, lived to be almost a hundred. They built at Tennessee Temple University back in the days of Dr. Robertson's era, the Charles Wagle Music Center. I was only 37 years of age, and they asked me to come down and ask Dr. Wagle, who would you like to preach the dedication message? And Dr. Wagle said, I like Dr. Hiles. You may remember this Sunday, Dr. Robertson called and asked me, Brother Hiles, would you come and preach for me? I want you to dedicate the music center on Friday night, give you a live story on Saturday night, and preach for my both service on Sunday. I said, I can't stay on Sunday. Why, he said, Brother Hiles, brother, he said, no, he said, Jack, <laughs> don't try that. He said, Jack, one Sunday's not going to hurt you. Come preach for me. Just dedicate the Wagga Music Center. Stay over Sunday. 
One Sunday's not going to hurt. I said, one Sunday wouldn't hurt you either. So you preach for me, I'll preach for you that Sunday. You remember that? Dr. Robertson came and preached here for me, and I was down there and preached for him. I dedicated the music center on Friday night. Dr. Robertson was still there then. Went out in the street, and I cut the ribbon. Then Senator Brock was uh, beside me, and the mayor of Chattanooga, and I cut the ribbon and dedicated the building. After it finished, I wanted to find Dr. Weigel. He was up close to 100. I wanted to find him. I looked and couldn't find him. I asked Dr. Robertson, where's Dr. Weigel? He said, we built an apartment back in the back of the Weigel Music Center for Dr. Weigel to live in. He's probably back there. I went back there. I knocked on the door. Nobody came to the door. I knocked louder. Then I heard some noises. It sounded like the squeaking of bed springs. And then I heard an old voice saying, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Glory to God! And the bed springs are squeaking more and more and more. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Amen! Whoopee! I finally said, Dr. Wago! It's Dr. Hiles! He came to the door, barefooted. Had a pair of pants on, shirt unbuttoned, shirt tail out. You could see his hairy chest. Hair, both hairs messed up. Almost 100 years old. I said, Dr. Waga, what's going on in there? He said, just practicing for heaven. Practicing for heaven. Some of you folks better get in practice. So I wanted to praise like Jesus. I've never seen Jesus praise, so I chose the man that I thought praised the most like him and set him as the model for my praise life. I chose Ford Porter, who I thought prayed more like I never was in the Garden of Gethsemane. I never heard Jesus pray, but I wanted to choose someone that prayed like him. I've never was seen Jesus walk the streets of, of the, his country, but I've seen John Rice walk the streets of this country. I never heard Jesus preach or lead. I've heard Lee Robertson preach and lead. So I chose somebody between me and Jesus, more like Jesus than I am, and tried to make a first down and a touchdown before I could win the game. I tried to find somebody who thought like Jesus. And I, I copied Dr. Bob Jones, Sr. What a mind. What a philosopher. What a brilliant man. The most amazing combination of being a, a big evangelist and a, and, a, and a wise philosopher I've ever met in my life. So look, Folks, just in case you think I'm smart, blame Bob Jones Sr. If you think I know how to praise God, then you look to Charles Weigel. If you think I'm a good leader, you look to Lee Robertson. If you think I'm a little bit like Christ, you look to John R. Rice. If you think I can pray like him at all, you look to, to uh, Dr. Ford Porter. I'm trying to say, set, look, watch the way. Look, don't pick out, the, don't pick out some rule breaker at the high school. You children, don't pick out some guy because he can shoot a basketball through a hoop. Don't pick out because because the guy leads and leads in part. Don't pick out you and don't pick out somebody that's a rebel, that's rebel against his family, that leaves his family someday, and that's a rebel against his mom and dad, and very breaks the stays inside the rules. You pick out the fella who's the most like Jesus in the high school and you try to be like him. Don't don't you pick out some college student that barely keeps the rules. Go soul winning. If you got to go soul winning for one hour a week, he goes for 60 minutes. Don't pick him out. Young ladies, if you want to pick out somebody's a model, you pick out some of these, bus, these young ladies that go on the buses on Saturday morning and work the bus routes or the Bible clubs. And they go out there and they say, all day on Saturday, I don't care if it's 100 degrees or, or 10 degrees, snow on the ground, and their hair gets messed up and their hair gets wet, but to keep on going and keep on going. Don't you pick out some little flippin' hussy listening to a rock music tape. Don't you do it. Choose somebody that's clean and decent and right. Who loves God? All the time. While I was trying to study, while I was studying John Rice so I could try to live like John Rice, who lived more like Jesus than any man I ever met. While I was studying Ford Porter, trying to emulate his prayer life. While I was studying my mother, trying to emulate her life of love. While I was studying Lee Robertson, trying to emulate his leadership. While I was studying J.C. Sizemore, if, if 
My wife will tell you this. When you hear me teach on Wednesday night, sometimes you'd think J.C. Sizemore is teaching. And I don't, by the way, I don't mind it. Somebody said, Dr. Bob Gray. Said, you sound like Jack Hiles when you preach. He said, that beats Robert Schuller. You say, you mean you're supposed to copy somebody? If you check the word follower or pattern in the Bible, it's pretty close to that. When you're trying to be another Lee Robertson, as somebody said to a preacher, you can't beat that. Do you know why basketball players, listen to me, why basketball players don't wear shorts up here? Would you get your big feet out of my way? You're going to grow out, grow out and be like Ray Bordway someday. You know why basketball players don't wear those little short shorts anymore? You know why they wear these baggy shorts down their knees now? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Let me ask you a question. If you're a basketball player, <laughs> you're just trying to be like Michael Jordan. Sure. You make $25 million a year someday. And this country is filled. If you don't believe it, go to the airport and see how many young guys have got the number 23 on their chest. Well, if there's nothing wrong with trying to be a, for, a, for the world to try to be like a Michael Jordan, what's wrong with somebody trying to be like a Lee Robertson? Set your goal to win the game. Set an earlier goal to score a touchdown. And set an earlier goal to make a first down. You don't start off teaching a new convert to love his enemies. You start off teaching him to love his friends. You don't start off teaching a new convert to lay all on the altar. You have to ask him just someday come to the altar. You don't teach a new convert to give all, everything to God. Just teach him to give a tenth. You don't teach a new convert to pray in public. Teach him how to pray in private. Let me go back to my text. Plural. Paul said, I'd like to know him and the power of his resurrection and fellowship of his sufferings. He turned around to his preacher boys and said, Fellows, be followers of me. He turned around to their followers and said, Be follower of Timothy. He's an example. Young Christians, you follow Timothy. Timothy, you follow me. I'll do the best I can to be like Christ. That's the story of it all. Almost 21 years passed. It was the last day that Dave was to ride with me home after church. By the way, Cindy took his place, and for years she rode home with me after church every Sunday. But this is the last day that he's going to get married next Friday night. This has been now many years ago. It was the last day. I knew it. He knew it. If ever a dad and a son were close, it was Dave and me. He got in the car, and everything was very quiet because both of us were sort of choked up. We got in the car and drove down. Said little, we got to Seoul and crossed the tracks and got on on um, Fayette, and then went down Fayette. We got to Calumet, and Calumet turned left on May Street there. And not a word had been said. Both of us had tears in our eyes. It was the last Sunday he did ever ride home with his daddy. He's getting married next Friday night. We got to the corner of May Street in Columbia, and we started turning right. And Dave looked at me and said, Dad, are you God? And I said, Son, I didn't know you remembered that. He said, You told me 20 years ago when I was a little boy in the beginner department. That you hope someday, after being in your home for 20 years or so, I still get you mixed up with God. And my boy gave me something meant more to me than a doctor's degree. He said, after all these years of living in your home, you're still the nearest thing to God I've ever met. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer. Oh, to be like thee, pure as thou art, come in thy goodness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image, 
deep on my heart. I want to be like you. But between you and me, there's a lot of examples. A lot of t touchdowns I've got to make and a lot of first downs I've got to make. And so this morning, if you would be like him, you find someone who's trying to be like someone. Who's trying to be like someone. Who's trying to be like someone. Who's trying to be like Jesus. Step by step. First down by first down. And touchdown by touchdown. You can grow more like him. And more like him. Never satisfied until, as the psalmist said, we awake in his likeness. Would you bow your heads, please?